Thanks everyone for joining today's office hours on the Beginner's Guide to Oracle Apex. Uh, I hope you and your families are healthy and safe. My name is Joel Coleman. I'm on the Oracle Apex team, and we're grateful that you're giving us your time today. This session will be recorded like all other Apex office hours, and the recording will be made available later. And if you have questions at, at any time, please post these questions in the Q&A section in Zoom, and we'll ask some of these questions uh, at the end of today, okay? Two weeks ago, we had a very popular session with uh, Dan McGann, who is, works for Oracle, and he's a JavaScript expert and also an Apex expert. And um, this is more of an advanced session, so certainly not for the beginner, but I just want people to know that the replay of this session is now available, and uh, I have the URL and QR code here. Next week, the database division is having a six hour, consecutive six hour webinar called the Database House Party. And if you look for hashtag DB House Party on Twitter, you'll find everything you need to know about the DB House Party. And this starts uh, next week, Thursday, June 25th at 9 a.m. Eastern, which is, I think, um, 1300 UTC. Um, the focus of this is going to be on data driven applications and application development. Uh, the entire series of sessions will weave together a common scenario from architecture to the development of a system to microservices, and there will even be a little bit of Apex at the end. I'd like to introduce uh, our team member, Anthony Rayner, from hopefully sunny Plymouth, England. Um, I first met Anthony in 2008 when he worked for Oracle Consulting and uh, he joined the Apex team in 2008, and he had actually used Apex since its genesis. Um, Anthony has either led or contributed to numerous areas of Apex, and however you want to measure a person, either personally or professionally, um, I think Anthony excels in all ways. Uh, we're lucky to have him on the team. Um, Anthony is an architect and a software developer on the team. He's not a product manager but it was his idea for today's session. And this is a, a bit out of the ordinary uh, from his, his day job, but he wanted to deliver a beginner's guide to Oracle Apex for those who are curious and those who are just getting started. And with that, Anthony, I'll turn it over to you. Um, yeah, so here we are. So uh, here we are. Welcome to today's Apex Office Hours, uh, the beginner's guide to Apex. My name is Anthony Rayner. I work for the, as a developer on the Apex team, as Joel mentioned. And uh, in today's session, we're going to cover everything you need to know to get started with Apex. So just in case I mention any general product direction, um, I need to show you the Oracle Safe Harbor slide. Meet the full stack developer. They have it all, front end and back end coding knowledge. Uh, an eye for design, an awareness of usability, accessibility. They've got DevOps experience. They communicate well with the business and they're passionate about helping them succeed. But they are a rare commodity and quickly become the most popular person in the business. Everyone wants their time. The requirements for the business quickly exceed their bandwidth. IT are overwhelmed and the business are dissatisfied. The business needs a way to do it for themselves enter low code. So low code promises faster application delivery with minimal code and minimal cost. There's a cost associated with every line of code written both now and in the future. Low code reduces this cost and burden, reduces the buildup of technical debt and allows the business to solve these problems for themselves without them becoming a problem for IT. And here we can see some analyst statements just promoting the success uh, of low code when compared to more traditional coding methodologies. 10 times faster, productivity gains, speed of delivery. The benefits are clear. Introducing Oracle Apex. So Apex is a low code development framework built by Oracle. It allows you to rapidly build feature rich, enterprise ready desktop and mobile web applications. And whilst it's entirely possible to build apps without writing any code or just with low code, if you do know a little bit of SQL and a little bit about the database, you can really fly. 
Apex will suit you down to the ground. Apex really fits with your development style, whether that's low code or all the way up to the high control, you have the choice. So where is Apex available? It's available with all supported Oracle database editions and versions and can be run in the cloud um, or on premises. And you're free to move from one to the other. So build, build on the cloud and move to on premises. The choice is yours. And the cost? Well, with always free Oracle Cloud or Oracle Express Edition, it's free. Um, free for you to run production apps in your organization. And you, if you're interested in always free Oracle Cloud, please check out oracle.com slash free. Thank you. Okay, so without further ado, let's show you how easy it is to build your first Apex application. Okay. So um, the first thing you can do is just go to apex.oracle.com. Um, and this will uh, give you access to an Apex workspace where you can go ahead and get started straight away. So we'll go, go to apex.oracle.com, click on get started for free. We then have the choice to use the free service in the Oracle cloud, or uh, you can go to apex.oracle.com and get a free workspace there. This is where we'll go now. We just fill in some basic details. So our first name, surname, uh, an email address, and a workspace name. We can then fill in a few more details, which is just, uh, are you new to Apex? Uh, do you plan to use this workspace for training purposes? We'll hit next. Um, what is the purpose of you requesting this service? So um, you could just put, uh, kick the tires, you know, check it out, whatever you wish. And finally, there are some terms and conditions that you need to accept. So then we click next and we click submit request. Um, we get the message workspace requested and we're prompted to go ahead and check our email. So let's go to my email. There we go. Then you'll get a, a, an action required email come through. The workspace has been approved and then we go ahead and click create workspace. So this is now creating your workspace, which is your area where you can start building applications straight away. So let's go ahead and sign in. The workspace has been created. And um, we'll type in a new password. Okay, so then we're into the development environment. Now, one thing I should say up front is, um, yeah, so we've created a workspace. So we've got, we've got somewhere where we, can, where we can go ahead and start using Apex. Um, but let's look at the problem we're trying to solve. Um, and in this particular case, we, uh, we've got a spreadsheet. And let's have a look at the spreadsheet. It's a simple tasks um, spreadsheet used to track projects, tasks within that project. There's some dates, uh, status code, um, who the task is assigned to, and also some um, financial information, cost and budget. So this is a spreadsheet. Um, it might be passed around between people in the organization. It might just be yourself currently that manages that information. Um, but you want to create a web application based on this data. So how can we do it? Well, with Apex, it's super easy. So we'll go back to the app builder and we'll click on create workspace. Sorry, create application. On this page, you have the option to create a new application, an application from a file, which is what we're gonna do here, or a productivity app. And productivity apps are a set of um, pre-built and sample applications already available within every Apex workspace. So they're a great way to have a look at what's possible with Apex. And also you may be able to use some of the productivity apps already provided for certain use cases like Survey Builder, for example. But here, we're just gonna create from a file. So we'll select from a file. We can choose our file and we go ahead and just choose the tasks spreadsheet we just showed you. 
you then come to a, a page where we can load the data. So the first step is that we're uh, loading the data into the Oracle database. All we need to do is type a, a table name. Uh, a table is just the object where the data is going to be stored. So we type tasks and then we can click load data. So then Apex goes off, creates the table tasks and insert the 79 rows that it's taken from the, the spreadsheet. We could go and have a look at that table, but right now we're gonna go straight in and create an application based on that data. So we're into the create application wizard. Uh, we can give it a name called tasks app. We can adjust a few things here like the appearance, where the menu will be situated. We can add additional pages if we wish to. Um, we can add certain features to the application and we will go ahead and check all of these features. So these are kind of ready-made features that are um, going to be built into your application right from the start. So things like um, administration, uh, access control, feedback, so being able to collect feedback from users. You can just go ahead and check all of these and then you get them for free as part of your application. So let's create the application. So this is now Apex going away and um, creating all of those pages and everything within those pages. Um, and then when that's through, we're taken back to the, the App Builder homepage. Okay, so let's have a look at what has been created. So we just go ahead and click Run Application. Uh, we type in the username that, is our, um, that we provided for our workspace. You can add more users to the workspace. Oh. There we go. Um, so you can add more users in the workspace. So you can have multiple users logging in um, and you can have different access rights for those different users. I'll show you those screens in a minute. Um, so let's have a look. This is, a, a, this is the application that we've built um, we've just typed uh, tasks, so one word we've typed during the creation process. Other than that, it was very simple. We just uploaded the spreadsheet, went through the Create App Wizard, um, and we've got a um, functional web application uh, right away. But we can show you a little bit of customization that's possible. But first, we can have a look around the app. So we've got um, a navigation section on the left, so that shows you all of the pages within your application. Uh, there's a navigation bar at the top for things like uh, collecting feedback from your users um, and then some additional functionality that's always visible on every page. Uh, we've got some nice charts that have been generated based on the data. Uh, but again, we're gonna go in and tweak one of those in a minute just to show you how easy it is to change these things. Uh, but let's have a look at some of these things in a bit more detail. So this is a report, um, it's called a faceted search report, um, and it, it's a, an inbuilt component within Apex, which easily allows you to drill down um, into your data or your users to be able to drill down into their data. So we can, for example, um, select a project, all of the counts get updated here on the left, we can drill down into say Mark Niles, open tasks for this particular project, uh, we can get rid of that particular assignee, so we can drill in and out um, of our data in a very familiar way, like you'd be familiar with um, the navigation style that's available, for example, with Amazon. We have a list of search criteria or filters or facets, speaking in the terminology that we use in Apex on the side of the page, and then you can easily drill in, drill in and drill out of your data to get to what you need. Uh, another type of page or report that's available within Application Express or Apex for short is the interactive report. Now the interactive report is um, again a report of that data so it's a visualization of that data um, but you can easily format it and enrich the, the information that's there um, and um, to customize it according to what you want to look at. So for example if we wanted to show all of the um, open tasks, we can do this. Uh, we might want to um, group by the assignee. 
So we can say, let's group by the assignee. Uh, we can also add information here. So for example, if we wanted to see the total cost for each assignee, we can easily do that with an aggregation. So we go to data aggregate, and let's say sum of cost. So then for each break or for each um, within each group, uh, you can see a total for, each, for the cost and you could equally add um, a total, um, the sum of the budget uh, and other types of aggregate are available. Now, uh, a very nice thing that's also available with interactive reports is the ability for users to save their view of the data. So we can, for example, if we're only interested, if we're always interested in um, open tasks, uh, we can go to report, select save report, and we can just say open tasks. And then this will be saved as a saved report so that when you next log in, you can go back in and you can see that, you can select that saved report to immediately go to that without needing to redefine it each time. So uh, tons of capability there. Um, another thing that's nice to show is computations. So you, you've got cost, you've got budget. That was in your original data from the spreadsheet. But what about um, the uh, budget minus cost? So um, how much is left for this particular task? So we can go ahead and create a computation. And we'll call it uh, budget minus cost. And we can just select it in this selector here. So we can say budget minus cost and apply. And there we go. So we've got a new column. Uh, this hasn't changed the underlying data in the table, but it's just added this information to this report. Um, again, which can be saved by the user that's looking at it. So they can easily extend, format, um, and do all sorts to their data, um, visualize it in different ways. Uh, just with the power of the interactive report. And from a developer perspective, all we've done is just created a, an interactive report based on that tasks table. So it's super easy from a development perspective, but super powerful from a, a user perspective. Um, also, we can go ahead and edit this data. So we can say, um, we can go into this form and we can update, say we want to make this uh, 6,500 cost. So it's fully editable. The data is edited in the database. Um, so it's a single source of data. Other people logging in will, will see the updated data, of course. So all managed by the Oracle database um, and um, available through your Apex application. Okay, so that's, some of the, that's a high level overview of the functionality that's being created from the Create App Wizard. And I wanted to show you a couple of ways where you can extend or customize what's being created by default, just to show you how easy it is to change or customize. So let's go to the dashboard page. And here we've got this end date um, chart, but actually what I'd like to see is project costs. So I, I'm gonna go ahead and change this chart definition. So I can click the quick edit from the toolbar here and this will take me directly to the page designer um, and that particular component in page designer. Page designer is the way that you edit, um, is the way that you edit pages within Apex. Uh, to give you a quick orientation, basically on the left of the, on the, left of the screen, you have um, a component tree where you can select the components on the page. So we've got our page up here, and then we've got in the content body, we've got the different charts that are on the page. So project, task name, start date, end date. These are all represented as um, components in the tree on the left. So if we want to edit or update or delete or add, um, we can do so directly in the tree and then make changes. On the right of the page, we've got the property editor, which is where you can see properties which are specific to the component that's selected. You can edit one or more components at the same time. So that's the property editor. Also in page designer, we have the component palette or the, the gallery. And this is really where you can choose from the available types within Apex. So for example, uh, here's your interactive report region type. We could create one by dragging it onto the page here. 
Um, but for this example, all we're going to do is adjust the end date chart that's been created. So we'll select end date. We can either select it in the tree or in the layout view here. We're going to change the title to be project costs. And then we need to go down to the, there are other attributes. For example, you can change the chart type uh, all declaratively. So just with the mouse. And, but here we're going to change the data. So what we need to do is just select the tasks table, tasks table. So we're just specifying the source for the series of the chart. And then lower down, we can see the um, important stuff for what's going to be actually displayed in the chart series. So here we're going to say, okay, so we want to see the label is project. So we want to see project along the bottom of the chart. The aggregation is sum and the value is cost. So we want to see all projects and their total cost in a nice bar chart. So we'll save those changes. Rerun the page. And then with any luck, we should see the updated project costs chart down here. So that's all good. Okay, so let's make another couple of customizations. We'll go back to our edit page. So here, we're back in the edit page. And what we'd like to do is for project, um, if you're creating a new project, something that would be useful would be able to either create a new project or pick from an existing project. So what we can do here is we can change this into an autocomplete type to allow us to do that. So again, we'll use quick edit. We can go straight to the project item on that page. Now this is currently a text field. As you can see, project is selected here and it's a text field. We're gonna change this to be text field with autocomplete. Um, and then page designer is telling us with the the red indication that we need to provide a bit more information for this particular setting. And because it's an autocomplete, it's going to need to pull those values from somewhere. Um, and so we can very easily just define a simple SQL query, which is to say, select all of the unique projects from the tasks table and order them by the project name. So just a little bit of SQL there to enable you to get that information from the database. So if we rerun this page, uh, let, me, let me go to the create actually, so it's more useful. So we, can, we could start typing uh, a new name or we can pick from an existing name. So pretty easy just to extend the capability there of that standard page. Another thing we'd like to do is maybe change the, um, well, another thing we'd like to do is add a validation. So here, for example, let's say we would like to not allow any budgets to exceed 10,000 pounds. So in this case, um, we need to add a validation and this is also very easy to do. So let's go to this page. The field or the item that we need to validate is the budget column. So we can select the budget, sorry, item. So we can select the budget item. We click create validation. Let's call the validation. So we need to give it a name so that we know what we're valid validating. And let's call it budget less than 10,000. And then we, um, we need to select how that validation is going to run. So basically, in this case, there are some built in ones like um, item not null, item is equal to or not equal to. But in this case, we're just going to use a simple, small inline block of PL SQL. Um, and I can talk you through this and it's basically a simple if then statement. So if the budget is less than 10,000, we return true. So that's okay. Thumbs up, the validation passes. However, if it isn't less than 10,000, so if it's 10 or greater, we return false and the validation will fail and the user will not be allowed to proceed. So, uh, we can just click the check mark to make sure it's valid PL SQL. And then the only th other thing we need to provide is the error message. So this is the message that will display for the user when the validation fails. We can save that. And then if we go back to our page, let's rerun the form. 
And if we try and save with a value greater than 10,000 for budget, we should see the validation error message. This prompts us, um, tells us what the problem is, and then we can go ahead and just correct that. Nice and easy. So very easy to extend and customize uh, according to your specific needs. Okay, so it's a brief demo. Let us go back to the slides. So when building applications with Apex, you can just focus on the problem you're trying to solve and let us take care of all of these other kind of important aspects of modern web app development. Uh, we, uh, with the framework, we provide this, we provide all of this for you. Um, personally, I'm, I'm highly passionate about accessibility in Apex and trying to make sure Apex is easy to use and accessible for as wide an audience as possible. Uh, the eventual aim being that we that you can build applications that are highly highly accessible with really minimal uh, additional effort on your behalf. Um, so uh, we're getting there, um, and um, we have other people across our team who are equally passionate about the other areas of the product here. So let us take care of how the uh, of how your app works, um, whilst you can focus on what your app does. So. Just to show you what's possible with Apex, let's take a look at some real world examples. So uh, recently, um, the, we, we, uh, the, the Oracle built the therapeutic learning system uh, in under two weeks to help manage and track the effectiveness of medicines in the fight against COVID-19. Uh, it was a huge effort, um, certainly not just a one man effort it, within Oracle, it involved a, a large number of people, but Apex, proved itself um, up to the job of um, being, the, being the, uh, the framework that was used to build this application and more applications are on the way. So, um, so yeah, um, Apex was used for this and um, was delivered in under two weeks. Another site is apex.world. Um, this is a community built site and it's meant as a kind of an aggregator for all things Apex. Um, there's a, an incredible team of the community behind this. Um, it's intended to be, for those who are passionate about Apex, kind of like a single place to go. Um, they spend a lot of time moderating and aggregating the information that's out there on the web. So this is a really great place to take a look at. And it's also a shining example of what is possible with Apex because it's entirely built with, with Application Express. Uh, another Awesome example from the community is Farby, which is um, for all a beautiful earth for short, uh, built by the Apex community to help fight the battle against climate change. It's a really unbelievable piece of engineering, so um, please take a look at that. Uh, NHS York have used Apex to track and manage their bed management system. Um, works great and allows them to keep track of bed, bed management within the hospital. Neath Port Talbot Council in Wales, um, very um, talented developers over there, and they've um, used Apex for some um, brilliant projects. One of which is for incident reporting, um, works on different devices, follows the government guideline, design guidelines, and is bilingual, um, so it works in um, Welsh as well as English. All possible with Apex. And Oracle, Oracle runs on Apex. There's literally thousands of applications across the company written um, by not just IT, but by various lines of business, um, helping run the company. So as you can see, not just the spreadsheet replacement, um, so much more, um, the possibilities are, are really wide and varied. So another important part of Apex is the incredible um, and vibrant community with around 500,000 developers worldwide and growing all the time. They love to learn and share ideas with each other. Um, so rather than me tell you about them, um, let's hear from some of them now. Hello, my name is Dimitri Gilles and I'm from Belgium. And I just love Apex. It all started when I was a little kid and I was working with computers all the time. I also really like data. So when I saw the Oracle database in 97 for the first time, I was just blown away by what you could do with it. You could get so much value out of this data by using a database. And then in 2004, I saw Apex for the first time. It was living in the database 
And it was the fastest way to bring this data alive just by using a browser. By using Apex, I could show the data in a browser in charts and reports. I could even manipulate the data. I was just blown away by it. I loved Apex so much that since that day, I never stopped doing anything else. I even started a company and with our company, we're building applications for other companies. We are giving training and consulting. We love Apex so much that we even built extensions for it. Our most known extension for Apex is Apex Office Print. If you didn't check out Apex yet, it's a really nice tool. Uh, it's a low code development tool living in the database and it gives you so much value. It gives the value that you need for your customers. It's not only a great tool, but there's also a great community behind it. So if you didn't check it out, go and check it out. Hi, I'm Martin. I've been using Apex now for well over 10 years. I kind of came into it as an accident. A former employee asked me to take a look at what the capabilities are. And ever since that, it's really changed my life for the better. So things on how I use Apex, I use it really to solve business problems quickly and efficiently these days. Before, when I first started programming and learning about programming, I tried to spend a lot of time learning about all the cool techniques and technical aspects of things. But Apex has really changed my philosophy and view on that as it allows me to focus on the problem first rather than on the technical solution. What I really like about Apex is if it's a simple problem, I can use the low code methodology. However, if it requires a lot more customization based on business rules and processes, I can expand and completely can customize everything I want. Hi, my name is Richard Reeder and I'm a senior director at Oracle. I've worked at Oracle for about 22 years now, and I'm delighted that I've been able to spend the last 16 of those working with Apex. Back in the 90s when I first started, uh, I worked a lot with Oracle applications, both in internal support roles as well as with Oracle Consulting. And so I spent a lot of time writing SQL queries against application tables, even though I'd never created my own application. I left Oracle for a few years to try my hand at a career in photography, uh, but returned in 2004. And at that time, I started working with what was then known as HTMLDB, which of course is now Apex. Um, it's not an exaggeration to say that it was love at first sight. Today, I've got two people on my team, Isabel and JP, who develop and support about a dozen Apex applications. Our highest traffic applications has served about 39,000 users over the last uh, five years with about four to 5,000 unique users per month. That application is used for the distribution of marketing materials throughout Oracle. I love Apex. It feels more like fun than work. Apex allows us to do great things. As has always been the case, Apex allows us to create an application in a short time frame, show it off to people, get their feedback, make rapid adjustments, and then deploy it to a wide audience very quickly. The UI always looks great thanks to the meticulous design work of the Apex product development team. We generally try to avoid doing extensive customizations and rely on the work they've done. Um, that way we're able to take advantage of new features as they get rolled out in, in future releases of Apex. Best of all, we get the opportunity to work with the Apex product development team. They're a great group of people and they're super responsive to our issues and feedback, and they're relentless in making Apex better and better year after year. Hi, my name is Gemma Wood, and I'm an Oracle Apex developer. I started working with Apex about 10 years ago. My Oracle career originally started way, way back, and I worked primarily with SQL, PL SQL, and Oracle Forms. I then took a short career break, and when I returned after a year or so, I felt that my skill set was a little bit dated, and I was very interested in getting into web development, and I dabbled in the past with HTMLDB, which was the former name for Oracle Apex. Um, so I decided to give uh, Apex a try. 
Anyway, I instantly fell in love with it um, and learned a little bit of CSS at the time, a little bit of JavaScript. Um, you certainly don't need to learn either of them inside out to get started to make your app sing a little. Um, I'm now the co-founder of a software as a service company. Um, we have 400 customers in 15 countries and 95% of the application is written in Oracle Apex. I think the things that I love the most about Apex is the ability that you can go from low code to high code for more if you if you need to for more complex use cases and just the, the speed that you can you can build pages is just amazing um, in addition to that we have a fabulous user community which is uh, always has involvement from the apex development team um, so yeah that's what i love about apex so are you going to join us Okay, so um, a big thank you to uh, Martin, Dimitri, uh, Gemma, and Richard there for prov providing those videos. Um, they say it far better than I can, and we really appreciate the time you took to do that. Uh, if you are interested in reading a little bit more about some more of our community, uh, we have this article here, four developers whose careers were changed by Oracle Apex. Um, they're um, beautifully written um, and available via this link, so please take a look at that. Gemma actually in the bottom right um, was the lady in the in the video there on, on the last video. So she gets double bill in today's office hours. Okay, so please take a look at that for some um, further reading. So who is Apex good for? Really anyone from developer to business user to student to hobbyist. Um, so whether it's a, a passion project, supporting startups or helping to run the enterprise, Apex has got you covered. So just a little bit about some more information to kind of help get you started, um, help to get involved with the community and where to get help. So let's first take a look at a couple of resources, um, apex.oracle.com and Apex World. Apex.oracle.com should be your number one starting point. Um, and let's show you some of the things that are there. So we'll go to apex.oracle.com. Uh, so here we can see, um, this is where we previously signed up for our Apex workspace. Um, but we're not going to do that this time. We're just going to have a little look around to see what's available. So if we go to this um, drop-down menu at the top, um, there's more information about the platform in general, like uh, more information about low-code, for example. Um, then uh, you can also find out specific, some more specific information. So if you're coming from a, a forms background, and you're interested in modernizing uh, forms applications with Oracle Apex. Um, we've got some information for you there along with a presentation. Uh, we believe Apex is a great, great fit for Apex um, for modernizing forms applications. You can leverage um, existing skill sets. Um, your data is already in the Oracle database and um, you may even have database objects that you can make use of. So, uh, Apex is a great fit for uh, modernizing your existing Oracle Forms applications if you wish to do so. Uh, also, to learn more, um, there's a, a, a plethora of information here. Um, we've got standard sort of documentation, but I wanted to point out under tutorials, there's some hands-on labs. Uh, so they're preset app, um, tutorials that you can walk through and build applications along with the tutorial and that will expose you to some of the different features and capabilities of Apex. So they're a great way to kind of um, uh, learn a bit more about how it works. Uh, also here we can have a look at um, under education, there is a certification program if you're interested to become a certified um, Application Express developer. Uh, we also have a bunch of information available for educators. So if you are a teacher, perhaps at school or um, at a um, university or college. Uh, we have a whole curriculum available for you. So if I just scroll down to here, um, and this is under the Creative Commons um, license. So you are free to use this curriculum. Um, currently, it's still using 19.2, which is the previous release. 
um, we are we will be updating this to to um, twenty point one at some point. But it's uh, completely free to use, free to distribute, free to change, and free to deliver within your organisation or within your um, education establishment. So a bunch of information available there from apex.oracle.com. Let's have a look at Apex World quickly as well. So this is the community built um, kind of portal aggregation site that's available for all things Apex. Um, there's a whole load of great information here. Um, there's a special section just to show how Apex was used or is being used to help against the fight of the COVID-19 virus. Uh, it's unbelievable how much has been built by how many people um, in all areas in trying to help um, fight this awful pandemic. So um, testament to the people involved um, that they have taken the time to build these things. It's truly awesome and humbling. Um, also here you can see uh, job information. So if you're looking for a job in Apex, there's um, plugin repository. So Apex has a lot of native capability. Um, there are native region types like the interactive report and the faceted search region, all of the items. So some of what we saw earlier, but it's also extendable. So there's a, a plugin infrastructure where plugin developers can write their own items or their own regions, easily share them on GitHub and via Apex World for other people to use or continue working on. And then easy to install in your applications to use. So um, there's a great deal out the box, low code, um, but you can also extend it in these great ways. So that's Apex World. Um, then to kind of getting involved with the community. So we've talked about the incredible, incredible community out there and how you, um, so how can you get involved? So let's have a look there. All of the, we've got um, residences on all of the, the local, all of the social media channels. Um, so Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, there's WhatsApp um, community groups, one in India, for example, there's a Telegram group. Um, but I'll show you Twitter here quickly. So if we go to twitter.com, excuse me. Um, so there's two things that are, uh, that are interesting to look at from Twitter. Uh, first of all is the hashtag ORCL Apex. So ORCL Apex. And hashtag is a way on Twitter, if you're not familiar with it, to kind of categorize the tweets that you're looking at. Um, and Oracle's, the, the official hashtag of Apex is ORCL Apex, Oracle Apex for short. Um, so uh, this is a really good way to kind of just stay up to date with what's happening in the community. Um, one point to note is that you don't need to be on Twitter to be able to search Twitter in this way. So if you, if you don't wanna be on Twitter, but um, you, know, you do wanna follow along with what's happening, then you can just go to twitter.com, run these searches, and you can still follow along very easily. Uh, it's very useful in, for example, when there's conferences happening, um, all, albeit online at the moment, but when there are um, in-person conferences taking place, uh, following the, OC, the ORCL Apex hashtag is a great way to just see what's happening at the conference. Um, sometimes people um, post pictures of the slides that are being shown and you can sort of pick up a little bit on what's happening at the conference through Twitter. Um, something that was just, you know, entirely um, not, not possible at all before the advent of social media. So it's, it's a great resource for that and for staying in touch with people. Okay, so there are Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups as well. Um, also on Twitter is this account, which is Oracle Apex. And this is the, if you are on Twitter, I would encourage you to follow the Oracle Apex, which is our official Twitter account. Uh, okay, so just finally, where to get help. So, um, there's an incredible community of people out there and we're a very approachable development team, but how can you reach out to us? How can we get help? So I just wanted to mention a couple of resources. Uh, there's the official Oracle community forum uh, at apex.oracle.com slash forum. And then there's a Slack workspace, orclapex.slack.com, um, which is not, um, not, not run by Oracle, 
uh, again, community driven um, and a great place to ask questions and get access to and sort of learn from the wider community out there. So for the forum, that's very easy. We can just go to apex.oracle.com slash forum. And that's a great place to ask kind of probably more involved questions. Um, Slack isn't Slack as good as it is, isn't always great for more involved questions or questions that require a lot of, um, a lot of um, discussion or maybe with some um, um, screenshots and such. But so there's the forum um, and this is monitored not just by the Apex development team, but also the wider Apex community really are, um, are prevalent in, um, in responding to questions there, but we do monitor it. So that's a good place to ask questions. Also, if you go, if we go back to apex.world. So if you do want to get access to the ORCL Apex Slack workspace, here's how you can do it. So you go to apex.world, you need to register here and then click um, get your Slack invite. So you're, it's invitation only, but if you register with Apex World, get your Slack invite here, and then you will be um, accepted into the uh, Slack channel. So this is Slack here, um, and you can see it's, it's really, um, it's used, um, uh, there's high traffic, there's over 2,600 registered users, um, and it has these channels so that you can kind of ask questions in specific channels, not just in general chat. So it's a really um, fantastic resource uh, and a great thing to not only um, learn from the community and ask questions, but also maybe even start answering some questions on there as well as your, as your knowledge progresses. So, so that's where to get help. Um, so if we go back to the slides here. So what are you waiting for? Um, head over to apex.oracle.com now, um, sign up for your free workspace and let us know how you get on. We'd love to hear from you. And I think we might have some time for any questions if there are any, Joel. Uh, yeah, Anthony, uh, brilliant by the way. And I love the videos. It's the first time I'm seeing them. Um, so there have been a, a host of questions and answers. Um, and just so people know, the questions and answers that the the whole uh, chat discussion will also be posted along with the replay um, probably in the next couple of days. Um, so we really just have, I grabbed a few questions because I wanted to make it interesting, Anthony. And perhaps you can show this. Uh, person Anonymous asked, is there built-in functionality to show usage tracking in the Apex app? Like how many users are using the tool and top pages and events? Could you show that please? Uh, yes, of course. Yeah, let me share my screen again. Okay, uh, so we will go back into the application that we created. Um, and if you remember, when we created the application, uh, there was an option to enable certain features within the app. And one of those features was activity reporting. So um, if you enable that when you're creating your application, um, we can go into the administration page in the app and we can see, um, for example, top users. Uh, there's not gonna be much data in here at the moment, but, um, but yeah, this will show you basically who is using the application um, and in which time frame. Um, so that's interesting. There's also um, an error log to see errors that have happened within your application, which is useful to see if people are maybe running into problems, but not um, communicating them back to you. Uh, and there's also page performance and page views, for example. So um, you can periodically check your uh, performance reports, for example, or, or if, there are, if there are reports of poor performance in your application, which is entirely possible if, um, if for example, the query that's querying the data is not written efficiently or in an optimized way. Um, then, uh, yeah, you can, you can sort of immediately go into this report, see, okay, yeah, performance was, you know, wh whatever it was, five seconds plus. Um, and then you, you can, you know where to look to, to uh, try and drill down on those performance problems. So, and there are similar reports available. Um, so that's on an application by application basis, but also in the workspace uh, within Apex, there are similar activity reports where you can 
um, where you can look at similar things like page performance errors, um, active active sessions, users that are that are the users that are most frequently using the application, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, all built in and available for you to use. Okay, thanks, Anthony. And just to augment as well, that same performance information is accessible via database views. So if you don't like our visualization on it, you can create your own Apex apps and, and, uh, and charts on the same uh, data. So I have another one for you, Anthony, and this is from Hobbyist Joel. Um, and this created quite a, quite a firestorm on Twitter the other day. Um, this is an interesting application. It's a spreadsheet replacement. Um, but can you do real applications with this? Is Apex only for non-professional developers? Can you do anything of substance with this? Uh, well, I'd say absolutely. And um, it's not just me saying that. You know, we've got um, a whole load of examples of, of, uh, six, of such applications um, within Oracle to start with. So um, I did touch on this on the presentation, but I did, didn't go, go into any details on the applications that were there. Uh, but for example, we have a um, people management system where um, employees can look up uh, other employees within the company. So it's, um, we call it ARIA people. It's, uh, you, uh, it's one of the most used applications within Oracle. Uh, it, I, I'm not sure of the exact statistics of how many people use it every day, but it's, um, Joel may know. And um, it's, um, yeah, uh, you know, highly successful enterprise Apex application that's used within Oracle. Um, we also have Einstein, which is a kind of a community portal type application, which different organizations and communities internally at Oracle use for um, questions and answers and sharing knowledge. Um, again, used across the company, um, successful application um, built with kind of all of the, you know, it's accessible, secure performance, has all of these um, check marks for enterprise ready applications built in. Um, and there are countless examples out there. Um, if you have a look at builtwithapex.com, it's a community built website. And there's a, a whole load of um, interesting examples built by non Oracle companies as well. So, yeah, I, I think those are excellent examples, Anthony. Um, and builtwithapex.com is interesting because those are typically applications on the internet. And I would say probably 80% of the use, uses of Apex is in back office. And there are a large number of customers out there um, who have built very large scale applications. Um, a quick one that comes to mind, a uh, European insurance company basically took their old Oracle Forms application, um, rewrote it with the Apex, and it is um, used by both front office and back office employees. And it's more than a thousand pages and used by about 7,000 distinct users every day. Um, so excellent. Uh, uh, last one here, Anthony, and if you want, I can take this one too. And this is from Adika. He says, uh, uh, or she says, with autonomous database, the Apex version would be upgraded as the database is upgraded. Uh, what sort of areas do we need to pay attention to? Um, do you want me to answer this, Anthony? Go ahead, please. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, so, so the one thing I should point out is Apex can be upgraded independently of the database. Um, the minimum database version today, at least for Apex 20.1, is database 11.204 and higher. On autonomous database, uh, oh, so sorry, to, to complete that thought, you can download the latest version of Apex onto your database as it comes out every six months, upgrade your version of Apex independently of your database. And as long as you're licensed and supported for the database, you're licensed and supported for that version of Apex. For Oracle Autonomous Database, which runs on the Oracle Cloud, the version of Apex will be upgraded independently of the database version. And in fact, the Apex 20.1 upgrade is happening um, very soon. And um, in terms of what to watch out for, it's actually a great question. Obviously, you would want to ensure, just do basic uh, testing, like you would for any web application, of uh, you know, the functionality in your app. But please understand that we invest a lot of time and money to ensure that when you upgrade your version of Apex, that everything looks and feels and operates exactly as it did before. 
that we, we invest a lot of time in this um, um, simply because we have thousands of internal customers at Oracle who we upgrade before we ever release Apex. And sometimes we break their applications, um, but we fix it rapidly before we ever release a version of Apex. And so unlike a lot of the ever dynamic, ever changing uh, JavaScript frameworks out there, to us, it is of paramount importance that um, what you built five years ago looks and feels and runs exactly as it did before. But remember when Anthony talked about all the benefits you get from this framework, whether it be security or accessibility or performance, you get all that goodness for free and you don't have to change a single line of your application. So what are areas to watch out for? Um, uh, I, I would always avoid using anything that's undocumented any internal variables, any internal APIs that you don't see documented, uh, stay away from that because it is always subject to change. And one thing that people always forget when they upgrade their version of Apex is to always, uh, uh, I assume most people are using the universal theme, to also refresh the universal theme of that application because you'll get all the, all the goodness of the next version of universal theme. And I think that's it, Anthony. I think this is, uh, this is brilliant. Um, thanks everyone for joining today. And thanks Anthony for really all your work in preparing this and really having the inspiration um, and a lot of the work in, uh, in delivering this. So I thought it was fantastic. Um, thanks everyone for joining us. As I said, the, the replay and the chat should be available online probably in the next couple of days. And uh, you can go to the website apex.oracle.com slash office hours. Or you could always um, just interrogate Twitter with that hashtag ORCL Apex, and you'll see an announcement there as well. Thanks, everyone, and we wish you a great day. Bye.